Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. If you're new here, my name is Liz and this is Simply Homeschool. So today I thought that I would show you guys how I'm going to organize our The Good and the Beautiful Science Unit Studies. So starting off here today, you guys, I just went ahead and purchased the PDF. I printed them all out here at home. This is going to be the Mammals Unit Study. And what I did was, for the most part, I used 32 pound paper. Now you do not have to use that at all. I just wanted a better quality of, you know, the way that the photos looked or the illustrations and things. So that's why I used the heavier um, weighted paper. So basically what I have in store for us today is my book I am going to spiral bind. Now, I still printed out, let me, let me back up a little bit. If you guys are not familiar with The Good and the Beautiful, they have all different types of science unit studies. They are pretty awesome. This is going to be our first year using them. Now, within the teacher guide, you also have the, the students' materials, if that makes sense. Now, I printed out everything for myself and I only printed out the things my daughter would need. So for instance, the flashcards she's going to need. These little bear cards. She has a lot that she's actually going to need. You can see here that the stack is still pretty heavy. Um, again, these I printed them all out on 32 pound paper. And some of them are worksheets, things she has to write on, colors. Some of them are little books that she reads along with the unit. So um, I went ahead and just printed out her the things that she's going to actually need. I'm gonna do a flip through of the teacher, um, the teacher guide right here. I guess it's a teacher guide. It's the teacher material, teacher manual. I'm not sure what they call it, but for instance, in mine, I'm gonna have the table of contents. And then it actually shows, like for instance, this is lesson one, this is the teaching part of lesson one. So she's not going to have that at all. Again, on the back side, it's the same thing, okay? So I printed everything out for myself and only the things that she's going to need. Now what I'm going to start off by doing is I am going to organize it to make sure that it's in order because I'm not sure when I printed it out if it was in order when I printed it. So this is basically my stack that I'm going to be binding into the book. So I'm just gonna kind of show you guys what order I'm going to have my book in. So starting off, these are supposed to be the stickers but because I print them out, they're gonna have to cut them out and then paste them. But if you order the actual book, this will come as stickers. And then you have a map here, so they'll be placing the stickers where they belong on the map. So I'm, I'm trying to figure out where I want to put this in my booklet. I'm not sure if, I think I'm gonna put it in the very back, okay? So it's easy to get to, so I'm not digging through pages. Okay, so basically this is gonna be laminated, and this is going to be the start of my book. I'm gonna move it over here so you guys can see both sides. So I'm gonna start off with all of the vocabulary words. It's going to be easiest for me to have these into the front so that I can find them quickly. And what I'm going to do, because these are gonna be broken up into lessons with the kids, is the last page that we use, say we use ecosystems. I'm gonna use a tab and stick it here so that I know that this is the page so I don't have to flip through all of them all the time. So that's what I'm thinking I'm going to do. So the front pages here are gonna be all of my vocabulary words. <clears throat> so we'll go through that. <clears throat> the next section after that is just gonna basically be starting off my book. So we're gonna have the contents, we're gonna have all of the informational things that the teacher needs here at the beginning, mammals and um, mammal supply list. That's the supply list that you would use to get all the stuff. And if you guys are interested in that video, I will be posting a video or uploading a video on that as well, how I'm getting everything together and how I'm gonna store the units. Okay, so here is the start to lesson one. 
and this is everything that you are going to be reading as the teacher. So I just kept this together like this laid out. I believe this is even how it's laid out in um, the PDF download. So then this is going to be the last page of the instructional part to lesson one for me. And then I have the things that the kiddos are gonna be using. So all of the next pages here are going to be what's broken up into their lesson folders, except for this, of course, this is the answer key. And then after that, I have the seventh and eighth grade extensions here, just in case I'm not sure if I'm ever gonna use this unit again when they're older or change things up. I'm not quite sure, so I just wanted to have that just in case, so I printed it out. And then on the other side of the extension, it's just going to start my next lesson. So here is lesson two. This is all of my teacher keys, or my teacher guides, more teacher guides. And then it goes into the kids' worksheets that they're going to have. And I'm literally just gonna be reading from my book, which is nice because everything will be in one place. I'll have my own that I can read and follow along as the kids are reading. So this is the last page for the children. So they're actually making like a little booklet with this, but this is the last page for them. And then it goes into the extension. That's how I know that it's the end of our lesson. And then it goes into lesson three and it's the same thing, parent or teacher guide. And then it'll go into the worksheets and then extension. And that's how I did the whole entire book, you guys. But I am really thinking that on this last page here, I'm going to have the sticker, and then my um, map. So then when I open it, it's literally this last page here, so it's easy for me to flip around and go, okay, you guys, put that sticker on Africa. You know what I mean? So I think that that's how I'm going to do mine. Okay, so now that I have all of my paperwork in order of how I'm going to bind it in the book, I'm going to set it aside. And I'm going to work through my daughter's. So this will be the front of her binder. Now, I wanted to mention what I'm going to do is I'm going to use these folders and they open up, they have a little pocket and then it has three holes in it to where you can put it in a binder. I saw this from another YouTuber and it was such a great idea. It was perfect. So I wanted to use that for this way of organizing. I'm gonna go ahead and cut up all of the things in this book here, or in this stack, and then these are gonna be organized per lesson into each one of these binder folders for her, or pockets. So, what I'm going to do though, is this isn't all for, let's say, lesson one. Maybe four of these cards go in lesson one three of the next page go in lesson two. So I am going to have to pay attention to that when I cut them up and I put them in each one of these pouches because these pouches are gonna be for less the lessons, okay? So you wanna make sure you only put your vocabulary words in the folders corresponding with the lesson they're working through. Okay, so I'm gonna start staggering these per lesson. So this is gonna be lesson one. Oops. So we're just gonna put this here, okay? And then I'm gonna move this over so you guys can see. So this is gonna be lesson two. And if you don't know what order they go into, just make sure you look in your teacher book or you could even go online where the download was. So that's two, so I'm gonna stagger it. So this is going to be lesson three. Lesson four, elephants is five. And 14. So that is the order for the cutouts and for the folders.
All right, you guys, now I'm gonna start binding my book. So here is the binding. This I ordered on Amazon. I'll have it linked down below. It's a 4.1 pitch spiral binding and it is 18 millimeters, 18 mm. I also do not have the, um, the crimping tool, so I am just using my pliers and my cutters. So this is the tricky part, especially when it gets this thick, sometimes the lines or the holes don't match up, like if I'm not perfectly putting them in the pro click. So I'm just gonna take a little bit at a time, as you can see here, about that much. And I'm just gonna start with this bottom hole with the spiral binding. Hold on. And then you're just gonna stick it through this bottom hole and just wind it through, right? And then I'm gonna stick this aside and I'm going to try to continue it through this one here. And if you can't get it in, do what I'm doing, just kind of pull a little bit of them off. not working you guys what's going on there we go okay and it's easier once you get started so it's starting is what's kind of you know the toughest part I would say to it and then I'm just gonna put the back here and the front and back cover is always super slippery so I'm gonna continue rolling it so I'm just gonna go back to the front here and start pushing it through that next hole and you just see how easy that one went in it's gonna get easier because it's already kind of aligned but you kind of have to like wiggle it around a little bit to get it to go through okay so there is that now I have looked at other um, binding notebooks and I see that the top is, I always start here. See how it's right here? And I'm just gonna take my needle nose, my bent needle nose, I don't know, these are my jewelry making pliers, but I'm just going to take it here and I'm going to curve it underneath so that it's kind of like a loop. You see the little loop there? And I'm just gonna squeeze it, okay? And then I'm just gonna wind it down just a little bit so that it's about halfway. And then the bottom, I always have to do a couple times. I always do it too long. But if you see this last spiral right here, I'm going to cut it right where it meets the paper. So, where it meets the paper on the bottom. I'm gonna take my ply, I think I need to cut it back a little bit more. So I'm just gonna take these again and I am going to just twist it under to make another little loop and then I'm just gonna squeeze it. See, that's way too long still. Do you see how long that is? So I'm gonna cut a little bit more. I always have to do this, like I said. I'm always afraid of cutting it too much and then not working. There we go, that's perfect. See how it's has the little loop and then you just open it up there here let's wind that a little bit there we go but it opens perfectly now see okay so this is my copy so mine is done and I went ahead and I stuck the map and the stickers in the back so the stickers and then the map so what I'm going to basically be doing is, this is gonna go at the front of the book. These I believe I'm gonna just stick in the binder pockets. And then these are going to actually have to be cut up and placed in the correct, um, the correct lessons that they belong in. So we'll do that while we're recording so you guys can see how I do that. But what I'm going to do is, for instance, this is gonna be lesson one. So this stack is going to go into this folder. Now, if there were anything that I needed to cut, I would cut it and then place it 
inside of here. It does have this little piece of paper in here that you could write lesson one on, but I'm gonna be reusing these from year to year until they just give out. And instead of using that card, I just typed up my own on um, the printer, or I'm sorry, on the laptop, and I printed them out. So I'll just cut these out and stick them in the front here. You can totally use these and then just make new ones if you wanna reuse it. I'm just doing it this way, guys. I don't know why, no rhyme or reason, that's just how I'm doing it. Um, another thing I wanted to point out is on the lessons that have smaller pieces. Let me see if I could find one. I think it's further back here. Is it primates? I know they have smaller pictures and stuff to cut up in. It's gonna be cats. So for instance, when I start cutting up like the smaller blocks, and I know they even have smaller pieces, I'm going to be using envelopes. So if I have to cut out these guys, I'll be placing these in just a regular white envelope and I'll write the name of the activity that they need those for and the lesson just in case they get mixed up. I'm not like going crazy looking to see where to place them. But I wanted to point that out before I actually get started with the cutting. So that is how I'm doing that. Okay, so I'm gonna need a second pack because it comes with 12, but there's 14 lessons. So. need two more of these and if you guys are at all interested in these or a cutter or laminator or pro click or whatever I will have it linked down below in my Amazon storefront so you can always go there and check check it out so now I'm gonna start putting these little sheets in the pockets here mm -hmm. It is now getting darker outside. I've had to take breaks because that's how it is with, you know, doing projects for school and mom life. So what I've done is I have a binder here. I've had this binder. I always reuse our binders because it can get pricey. So I try to save my money in certain areas to spend money in others. Like for instance, being able to purchase these, I saved on the binder. So I have all of the binders with their lesson number tag and the lesson name in there. So those are all in order. Now I'm just going to take the front cover here and stick it in this little pocket on the binder. Like that. And I'm going to set it aside and I'm going to get started on cutting out all of my daughter's worksheets. So I'm going to start by using my cutter. I can't find this cutter anymore. I was looking for blades to um, switch them out because mine are getting dull, but I can't find it. It's the Paper Studio, that's who the company is by, but also I have a Friskas one and it's really good as well. So if you guys are looking for one, Friska always works really well. So I'm just gonna cut these out. If you have scissors, you can use those, whatever you guys have, you know? So I'm just gonna go ahead and finish cutting up all of the vocabulary words. It's gonna take me a few minutes. So next, I am going to separate out the vocabulary words per lesson. And for this, I'm going to use my teacher guide. So basically what you're going to do is, let me move some of this stuff over. I have scraps on my table here. Um, sorry. Okay, so basically what we're doing is we are gonna be looking at our teacher guide for the corresponding vocabulary words. So for lesson one, it shows here 
it shows one down here. I don't know if you can see it. Let me move it over a little bit. So it shows this one, this one, and you're gonna wanna look at all pages just in case. And then those there, okay? So I am going to separate these out. So carnivore, herbivore, omnivore, habitat, ecosystem, organism, population. Okay, so these are all going to go with lesson one. So I'm just gonna stick it on lesson one and I'm gonna start staggering them as well. So lesson two, it shows these three here and then does it show? Nope. Okay, so one, two, three. We're gonna stick it here. And I'm gonna stagger this again. Because the next step we're gonna be cutting out these pages that need to be cut out and then we're gonna slide them into their pockets. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue with this. And here are my staggered piles here, okay? Okay, you guys, so here we have all of the piles that we need to go through, and I'm going to continue cutting. So it looks like a mess, but these are in order lesson one through lesson 14. I am just going to stick this into here. That way everything is together and ready. Okay, so I'm gonna set it aside and work through the next folder. So this is lesson two, this is ready. This will go as is. Now these she's going to cut. I don't know if she's supposed to cut them or I'm supposed to cut them. I'm thinking I'm just going to cut them and then I will have her put it together as a book. So with this one, I think that I went ahead and I cut these out and I think that I'm either going to have her do the use the brads um, to make it into a book or we'll staple it. I'm not sure, we may just staple this one, but I'll let her do that part, put it in order and then staple it. So I'm just going to take this and stick it in lesson two. Just like that, and I'll stick that one aside. So I'm just gonna go through the stacks here and cut them, organize them, and then stick them in her folders. take a moment to let you guys know that this is just the way that I'm organizing it. You guys do not have to organize it in this way. Also, I wanted to bind it with the um, projects that the kids are going to be working on. Now, you do not have to do that. I just like to see what they're working through and having it in front of me. I'm the same way even with like our unit studies. I always buy a second book, even with our curriculum. Um, like for our not grass, I have a book and my daughter has a book and I read along with her. It's just the way I am. You totally do not have to do it. You can just print it out one time and keep it all together and then hand it out to them as you go and just use theirs. Um, so it just depends on how you want to do it. Also, instead of purchasing these little pockets, you guys can put them in the little um, two pocket folders. You guys can use these little what are they these little pocket protectors is that what they're called pocket protectors these little plastic pocket protectors you can use um, if you don't want to spend the extra money and the same thing with the paper you don't really need a heavy duty 32 pound paper 
it's all just up to you guys what you guys have in for your budget and things like that for me to be able to purchase some of these things i have to cut corners in other places so it's just all about what you guys want for your homeschool so i just wanted to point that out while you guys were watching as i organized this just so you know that there's other ways to do it this is just the way that i'm doing it so let's go ahead and jump back in so here are all of the booklets or the pockets i should call them so i'm actually going to put them in this way so they're just gonna go straight into the binder like this So here is the finished binder for the kiddos. This one's for my daughter. So basically I've just put the map and the sticker page in the front here for her. And then it goes from lesson one to lesson 14. And literally you guys, it has everything she needs in these little pouches. So I can say, hey Tally, go to lesson two and pull out your mammal booklet i'm not sure if that's you know such a thing but she would go to her lesson two and she can go ahead and open it up and pull out oh here we go mammals and lactation so she can grab this it's going to help her build some independence so um, i've seen moms separate it in one binder so this would also be the teacher key and you would have your teacher um, booklet in here. So for instance, this would be in the front here. I didn't pull all the pages, but we would have the front here and then it would go into lesson one. You'd read lesson one and the lesson one pouch would be along with it. Okay, either in the middle of it, in the back of it, however you wanna do it. And then once you're done with lesson one, Let's say you flip lesson one folder over, it's empty. You can even take it out however you guys would like to do it. And then you would start reading through lesson two and you'd have lesson two in here with the pouch. Now for me, I don't like that just because it's super bulky because of the, the um, buttons here. And I don't know, it just would feel more awkward in this binder. For me, I like having my booklet I have a mess here on the table, you guys, but I like having my booklet where everything is. I just, I don't know, I'm that type of person, I guess. So, um, but you can do it this way. I know it works a lot for a lot of people this way. So you could do it that way. You can also have yours put into file folders so you can separate it out like lesson one, even the teacher key could be in a file folder that says lesson one. And then you can have all of the items like this in the lesson one file folder. You just grab the file folder, you open it up, you have your teacher information in front of you and then your kids um, cut out pieces that they would need for lesson one. I know that that would work really well also. So. There are different things that you guys can do to put them together, but this is how I'm gonna be doing it for this year. I don't know if I'm gonna change it. We'll see how it works out. Now, um, you will have to buy the two packs of pouches, like I said, and you only need, well, depending, I guess, depending on what, um, what lesson you guys are gonna be working on, because I know all of them don't have 14 lessons. So I bought two or three pouches, so I'm probably not gonna set up all of them in pouches to begin with at the beginning of the year. I will have them all prepped and cut out, but I'll probably just put the, the ones that don't have folders as of now, say like our third unit, I'll have just in pocket protectors in a binder, and then I could just transfer it over once we get through with this binder, just so that I'm not wasting money on these pouches, just to reuse them. And let's see, I think that's it. I wanted to show you guys that and I wanted to kind of give you guys other ideas on how to organize. So, there's that. that is it for today's video I hope that you guys enjoyed this I hope that it inspired you guys to get going on organizing your guys's curriculum please comment down below and let me know what you guys think about this organization video and if you would like to see the others 
All right, you guys have a beautiful day. Don't forget to hit that subscribe and the like if you like this video. And I hope to see you back on my channel. Be safe and be blessed always. What if the world had more of your smile? What if the wind could spread your love? What if your sweetness could reach everyone? There'd be no wars.